Okay, to begin with, first of all, I would like you to have a clear concept of the area which we will be talking about, as this will be the history and importance and the history of the Arabian period. This is the life of the Prophet ﷺ and obviously in order to start off with the life of Prophet ﷺ, his biography, you must know the system in which he was born and what was the prevalent system in the entire Arabia at that time. Now as you can see on this map, we will be dealing with this bit or this geographical section because we are going to talk about Makkah, Medina, Tabuk and all the areas which are adjo uh, adjoining. Then we are going to talk about Najran. Then we are going to talk about Hudaybia, Taif and all such areas. So this entire belt which we can see here on this map is called the land of Hijaz. So Arabian uh, Peninsula, it has been divided into different um, uh, the Arabian deserts and this particular land is called the land of Hijaz and it had a very strong history. You do get a question on the history of Arabia and in the past papers you must have seen some of the things, uh, um, some of the questions on the history of Arabia that who were the ancestors of Prophet Sallallahu what were the conditions of Arabia in which Prophet Sallallahu was born. So all such questions you, we, we are going to deal with this thing. Now when Prophet Sallallahu was uh, um, still to be born two centuries before the birth of Prophet Sallallahu the uh, Arabia was a desert and it was the period of ignorance or the period of Jahiliya. Now this name is not being chosen by any of the human figures but it is the name given to that particular era by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran and Allah talks about it as the Jahiliya period. Why the Jahiliya period? Because of the activities of the Arabs because of what they were uh, indulged into, how they used to uh, manipulate the other um, ethnicities, what were their concepts, how they used to tackle with all such things. So as we know, Arabia, which is a desert, an arid land, and it was during the time of Hazrat um, Ibrahim salam, which was nearly 4,000 years before Prophet salam, that Hazrat Ibrahim salam, he came to Makkah at the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he traveled from, you can say, from this belt which is Palestine, Jordan and all these areas because he was uh, living there and he was preaching in that land at the command of Allah. He moved from this land and he came and he left his wife and his child Ismail alayhi salam in Makkah and there it was a plain stretch of land as you can see in this uh, uh, picture that it was absolute desert without any uh, um, vegetation, without any people living there and it was a barren land where he left. Now this is the example of that barren land. This entire scenario you can see and he left his wife and his son over there. And as we all know the story of Hazrat Ismail and Hazrat Hajra. Hazrat Hajra she was running between the mountains of Safa and Marwa which are very close by near here and Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam he because of his crying and because of his constant rubbing of the feet on this, uh, the ground, the water well of uh, Zamzam, it sprang up from underneath his feet. And this is how Makkah developed into a city because then the tribes, when they were crossing by, they stopped with the permission of Hazrat Hajra. They stayed there and the first tribe, Jurham, they lived with the Prophet Sallallahu uh, uh, sorry, with Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam and Hazrat Hajra and Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam, he grew up to be the Prophet as well as with the help of his father who again visited them, they constructed the edifice of Kaaba at the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from that day onwards, Kaaba became the most important 
masjid on the face of this earth although it had been earlier also uh, constructed uh, by the other prophets also like Hazrat Adam alayhi salam and Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam but we are not going to go into those details you just start off with the history of Makkah that Makkah developed into a city and the people who were the followers of Ismail alayhi salam they were the believers of their time following the religion of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam which was also Islam but during the course of 4000 years the entire history of arabia or the entire outlook of kaaba it changed and because of the tribe of khuza they uh, who became the leaders of makka they brought the idols and started keeping the idols in kaaba and not just inside the building of kaaba but in the vicinity of kaaba also and at the time of the birth of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there were more than 360 idols in and out of uh, the building of kaaba okay Moving on to the other conditions because we have to deal with that phase in which Prophet ﷺ was born and which was nearly 570 years after the death of Hazrat Isa salam or after the uh, raising up of Hazrat Isa salam. as we Muslims we do not believe in the fact that he was being killed. Okay. The history of Arabia. So for whenever you are going to deal with the history of Arabia, now these key concepts as we discussed earlier, this concept should be clear with you people because it can help you in many of the questions as well as you had the questions, the past paper questions on this particular segment, which was that what were the, were, um, um, how were the Muslim, uh, the, um, what were the conditions of Arabia at the time when Prophet ﷺ was born. So you giving the entire uh, the knowledge that it was the uh, time period like we discussed that period was called Jahiliya. Why was it called Jahiliya? Because of its different factions in which it was divided. So the different ethnicities which were living there, you can talk about the religion in pre-Islamic Arabia was a mix of polytheism, Christianity, Judaism, Zoroastrianism. And what, what is the most important thing is that you must give the names of these important idols like Hubal being the uh, biggest god which was brought by the tribe of Khuza and kept in Kaaba. Then it was also the, uh, um, 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 the goddess of Lath and it was also Uza and then there was Manat, all these um, Naila, um, Osaf, Wad, Sava, Yagus, these were the few idols, other names which were given to different idols and this they had started worshipping the idols and the uh, methodology which they were, uh, did was quite similar to the Hindu religion these days as they are worshipping the uh, Makkans they also worshipped in the similar the practices were quite similar. Pilgrimage to Kaaba uh, was the most common and the regular form of worship and also with the this idol worshipping they would consider Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the highest deity to be the ultimate deity but these intercessors all these gods and the goddesses they believed they were the intercessors who are going to take the message to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because for themselves the Makkans they are sinful people and it is not befitting for them to even ask to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, um, uh, pardon them or to bless them with something hence they would only visit or they would only worship these idols. Finally their strong belief whenever always remember this thing that whenever man has to serve many gods be it the gods of society the cults, the culture, the uh, peer pressure, whatever you are believing in, whatever we are worshipping, to then superstition is something which is always a factor which is also going to influence such mentality because man will be afraid of so many things around them that they will be indulged into superstitious, uh, you can say all sorts of uh, myths and all sorts of legendary things. Hence, 
the Makkans were also involved not just in idol worshipping and the practices of sacrifice and giving human sacrifices also and also sacrificing and offerings uh, which were given to them as in any other culture it was the common practice of these people. Okay, now what about the political conditions of Arabia? Now politics as such which was something which they had a tribal setup, there was no one fixed form of a government in Mecca but the entire tribal setup they had their own individual uh, uh, principalities in which they would uh, have their own sheikh or their own leader and the leader was be all and end all for them. Now how was this leader selected? They had the tribal chief who was selected on the basis of his wealth, his bravery. Now this was something which was very important for them. His forbearance which was his um, um, ability to wisely find out uh, situations and uh, also to uh, have the inner uh, prudence to um, resolve all the situations. Also their hospitality. So it was a must for everyone to be for, to, for the, um, any tribal chief to have wealth to have bravery and this bravery was that they were men who would go to war at a very young age and they would fight for you may say that would it would take decades on small little petty issues they would fight and for generations and generations the setup which uh, you can uh, relate to as the setup of Balochistan maybe these days or any of the other tribal areas the, uh, uh, the Fata areas in which the tribes they have the authority every tribe they have their own set of rules and their own tribe members they are going to follow those rules under the leader whatever decision the leader is going to take they will be obliged to accept that decision it is like a gang culture you can also say that even if they have committed a crime a murder then too if they had the jivar of the fam uh, this um, condition now jivar is a very common use uh, use terminology which you must have and it was the tribal protection which was given by the leader to all the people a loner could not survive in those conditions and hence he must have the jivar which is the tribal protection and this is what prophet sallallahu was having from Abu Talib also that the jivar which he had given and because of which the Makkans they could not harm him physically. Okay, so all the tribe members like the gang culture if they have committed a crime they would support them, they would give them amnesty and they were um, absolutely um, under them. If they were immune to all the other tribes and they could go to war in order to protect this individual and this political asylum was so important for any member. Then we are going to talk about the social conditions of Arabia and whatever we have learned ever since uh, your early uh, classes also that they were indulged into gambling and gambling also it was the games of chances as well as divinations of arrows as well as other practices which are the practices of these frivolous activities which are going to encroach upon the rights of their fellow beings and the, uh, this was which was practiced there and Islam is going to shun these uh, practices and this is the reason why it was called the age of ignorance or the Jahiliya period also because they were Although uh, you can say that um, intellectually they were quite stirred up people, they were uh, um, um, very good memorizers, they had very good memories, yet they were involved in these activities. Drinking, which was also a very common practice and alcohol business was very common in the entire Arabia and it was that they would make the um, alcohol by fermentation of the dates as well as grapes because other fruits were not yet 
uh, introduced for, from which wine was made but this was what most of the families they were involved into which was drinking and drinking wine was a norm of the, the, that time very few people the righteous people who were intrinsically not uh, in, inclined towards this practice otherwise everyone it was a normal uh, thing for any family to support their sons to support anyone who would drink in those times also female infanticide now female infanticide was women because they had no rights and in order to bring them up they would they would spend certain amount of uh, the financial support so they uh, would kill their daughters or bury them alive or any type of otherwise female infanticide infanticide means that in the uh, childhood or as infants they were killed and that was sort of a uh, you can call a genocide of the females which they used to do and that would also be to bring the not to lower the family name because they would get involved into um, or the um, marrying a daughter would obviously uh, as per them it would reduce their fame their um, 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 you can say their power and for for the uh, the family in which she will be born uh, she will be married and hence they would kill them then it was interest taking interest and in all sorts of practices of loan giving loan then there were loan sharks also which they would uh, squeeze all what they could do by taking the uh, interest on the principal amount and the principal amount it would stay and this was a menace which was very very uh, um, prevail it was prevalent in that society then slavery uh, we are going to talk about uh, the poetry later on but first we are going to talk about slavery slavery was another practice which was very common in arabia as in the other parts of the world of uh, the then world because slavery and the human trafficking it was common and uh, they would uh, kidnap young boys women as well as the men who had strong built hence the abyssinian slaves they were very common in those days because they were men of uh, with uh, good stature and a good uh, physique so they were uh, bought they were sold in the markets as a commodity and hence this thing was practiced so the slaves they had no rights whatsoever they would call their masters as the mola and the mola had the authority on his life on uh, his belongings on whatever he had and hence he was like the um, everything for the slaves so the slaves were dependent on their masters for everything for even their basic necessities they had to bow down before their masters one good thing because all these factors which we have uh, discussed now they are generally the factors which are the uh, vices of those arabs but there were certain virtues of these people also and the virtue was that they had the excellence in poetry and language but they had no script uh, of their own so this is the reason why the big superpowers of that time which were byzantine and the sassanid empire the persians and the yamanites they would not consider them worthwhile because these people they although had uh, the very good and exceptional memories but they did not have their own script they did not have their own coins they did not have their own proper you can say civilized form and hence they were considered as barbaric by the outer world but for themselves these people they were fond of poetry they were fond of language and they would learn uh, the entire books and some of them men they had learnt almost 4000 to 5000 the uh, couplets and the duplets and all the poems which were common because poetry was the media of that time and you must remember that everything is controlled by the media as in these days also in those times that was the only means in which they would communicate and it was for with the outer world so the poets who would 
excel in these things they would go out writing all the details of important events of important uh, uh, political events as well as the social events and anything um, the storytelling uh, practices and then they would go to uh, different parts of arabia as well as outside of arabia and then they would have long like uh, concerts of these days they would have these big huge gatherings in which they would inform the people about the conditions of that time or about the conditions geographical political social conditions of that time so hence poetry or the language was something which the arabs they were really proud of also these people the virtues other virtues were their promises because they were men who would keep their promises and who would go at any length to help out the other people with the promises uh, which they would uh, do then they were very very hospitable people you can discuss this thing that they uh, were hospitable like they would go um, again at all lengths to entertain their guests and to feed them with the best what they had and to um, um, to serve them which was again a virtue of these uh, people then the third thing which was also very common which was like we have discussed you can talk about the poetry and their language and also that they were uh, uh, they did not lie generally they did not lie and this was something which they are uh, which you can also discuss uh, because uh, it will be the story of Abu Sufyan which we will, uh, we will be later doing. So this is how you can dis uh, divide this period and this will be the um, social conditions of Arabia. Now for the economic conditions. Now this is also very important and you will be discussing this because this, these were the reasons why they were rejecting Prophet Wasallam's message and also this was there was a past paper question also on this thing that what were the economic conditions of arabia now the most important factor which was giving a boost to their economy was pilgrimage because when the pilgrims they would come and they would definitely come because after the construction of kaaba ever since the time of hazrat ibrahim salam, it was a practice every year that pilgrims from the entire world they would come and visit Kaaba and they would perform Hajj. Now Hajj for them whatever practices they were doing but initially they had to come to Mecca and obviously when they would come it was also trading which they would do because uh, it would take many months to come and then they would stay there in Mecca as well as uh, out, um, 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 out of the months of pilgrimage they would go and come for and do the trading so with trading and coming for pilgrimage it was all connected with one another they would bring stuff bartering was a common practice they would bring stuff from different parts of the world to Mecca and then take different uh, merchandise from Mecca and would go back to their um, respective areas so these pilgrims it was for them it was a time of jubilation and also for the city of Mecca it was a time of jubilation because naturally when a, a caravan would come and there was all sorts of activities going on all sorts of new people pouring in then they are going to obviously stay at some place the economy is going to get a, boo, a boost they are going to pay the taxes for it they are going to buy stuff from here as souvenir and then they would go and this is going to give a boost to the economy of the people of Mecca also the offerings of kaaba to various gods another factor which was they were practicing and they would offer gold they would offer silver they would offer all the other um, offerings which were common practice in those times as the caretakers they would uh, get all these things and hence there was a priest class which developed because of it who were the custodians of kaaba and they were not very comfortable with the concept of Islam because they uh, felt that if Islam is going to be prevalent in this time in this region who would worship one Allah 
they would not come the pilgrims would not come just for one allah because this time to they would come for different gods for different variety of the statues which were kept there and they would worship they these statues and hence the economy will uh, of uh, the entire city of makkah it was um, um, it got a boost now for the other practice which was the interest on loans which we discussed earlier also that that was also a social mal practice which they were doing and also this was the interest on the loans that would um, also add to their economic and financial condition also the slave trading so slave trading the slaves were bought and sold and this is how they would generate money and makka was relatively uh, because being a metropolitan city it was something which the um, in, uh, the people of the entire arabia they would look up to and they would come and hence the tribe of quraish as they were the custodians of kaaba they were the rich people of arabia who would look down upon the other different ethnicities other different um, um, races other different people and hence they uh, they themselves were only rich and they did not ever want to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor okay now this is what you will be discussing in the uh, entire um, um, you can say the question and if you are going to now like we will be dealing with the past paper question and it would be what were the conditions of arabia before the advent of islam so you are going to discuss all the this is part a question almost 600 words as we discuss and uh, what are the uh, what rights has islam given to women which are not present in the period of ignorance so you can talk about the uh, all the conditions like we discussed the social religious political economic conditions and also you are going to uh, explain them and also with this you are going to explain the virtues of the quraish also that how uh, all these vices and the virtues also that how they manage their life in the conditions of arabia now for the rights or um, given uh, to the women by islam you can discuss about the female infanticide how the women were treated and what islam gave them islam gave them the rights of um, and the right of inheritance the rights of inheritance um, um, inheritance also islam gave them the right to testify islam gave them the rights to get education also islam gave them all the other human rights which not, were not given to her before islam so you can discuss all these four things and then you would give a good answer for this question okay for another question give an account of the religious political and social conditions of arabia before islam now this is the same repetitive question just the words they are uh, they have changed the words and it is the, almost the same answer which you will be giving for part b what is the significance of kaaba now you are going to decide, uh, give the significance when it was constructed but just because it's a four marks question you are not going to give the details of the time period of hazrat ibrahim alaihi salam but you are just going to give the importance and significance of kaaba as they had kept it is the house of allah always give start off with this but they had kept 360 idols over there because of this are these idols the economy of kaaba it was obviously increasing and they believed in this thing and they venerated kaaba they were always there to uh, worship in kaaba and they considered it as a holy place and because of it the barakas were um, uh, given to the people of um, Uh, people in the time of jahiliya period so this is how you will be dealing with different questions and this is how you will be attempting your uh, questions <laughs>